As you record transactions in QuickBooks, the VAT element is posted to the VAT liability account. You can see the VAT liability account if we go to lists, chart of accounts, and we type VAT, you'll see the, the VAT liability account. And within the VAT liability account, it's building a balance that will be payable to HMRC. If I double click on the VAT liability account, it shows me transactions and the VAT element of transactions that have been posted. That's the behind the scenes of the VAT, but if we wish to run a VAT 100 report to see the amount of VAT that we are liable to pay, this can be done by going to the top of the screen where it says VAT. We click on there, there's various VAT reports there that will help us. The first report to look at is the VAT 100 report. If I click on the VAT 100, you can see it lists the amounts relevant to the boxes on our VAT return. So box one shows the VAT on the sales that we've made in a period. Box four is the VAT on the purchases amount we can reclaim. And the net of the two, box five, is the figure that we're going to pay the revenue. You can see on this particular occasion, this VAT is set up on an accrued basis, which is based on the dates on the pieces of paper, the dates on the invoices raised, the dates on the bills received from suppliers. So assuming everything is posted correctly, this is the figure in box five that we should be due to pay HMRC. To check the detail that sits behind that figure, we would need to go to VAT again and click on the VAT detail. And within VAT detail, all the transactions will be listed under the box numbers. And if we see a figure here that is brought forward and a triangle, we click on the triangle, this will take us to past entries that have been amended or late entries that have been posted from previous VAT quarters. So those two reports, the VAT 100 and VAT detail, enable us to check our VAT. Once we're happy with our VAT, we can then go to VAT, file VAT and QuickBooks takes us through a wizard which allows us to post our VAT in QuickBooks itself. As you can see here it gives me my VAT agent which is fixed in the system, it gives me the date of the last VAT period and shows me the amounts on the VAT 100 including the amount to pay in box 5 which as we can see agrees with the VAT 100 we looked at earlier. We're happy with all the figures here. We can click File Return. And the wizard continues. I have the option to print a VAT return off, which we could normally do, but we may have already printed the VAT 100 earlier. And then it gives me the option to pay now or pay later. If I pay now, it's going to take me, once I've done the transaction, through to the Pay Bill screen. If I pay later, it's just going to complete the process and not take me to that Pay Bill. So I'm going to say Pay Later. And you can see that QuickBooks records all the transactions. So it marks the transactions off. It's been dealt with, it knows they're dealt with, it's not going to bring them forward for a future VAT period. So that's marking those off within the register. And it's also, as it marks them off, going to protect my closing date. And here we've got a congratulations to say that we've finished the VAT process, but also a note to say that the closing date in our preferences has now changed and QuickBooks is protecting the VAT period. I click OK on there, then we've completed the VAT filing. Close that down. If I go to Home and go to Pay Bills, under Pay Bills we can see here that we've got an HMRC VAT bill that's been generated. So QuickBooks has generated this entry during the filing process to say that the amount that we owe is the 5129111. We could pay that off in the normal way by clicking there to pay the bill when we're actually making the payment or it's been taken by direct debit by HMRC. So that's the way you follow the process of checking and filing VAT in QuickBooks.